right, this video is on energy and chemical processes. If you go to the table of contents, you can click on the link for this page and it will bring up this PowerPoint in some uh, blank spaces so you can fill in the notes as we go. Okay, so your objectives are to, one, be able to convert between energy units. We're going to talk about different types of energy units. Okay, uh, second, you're going to be able to know the difference between heat and temperature. And lastly, you're going to be able to read what we call a potential energy diagram and to determine the heat transfer within a chemical reaction that happens during a chemical reaction. So go ahead and start off first with what is energy? So energy is the ability to do work. So applying a force over a distance. For example, if I push a stool, I'm doing work upon the stool. I'm applying a force over a certain amount of distance, however far I'm pushing that stool. Okay. The first types of energy that we're going to talk about, one is potential energy. Now, potential energy is energy due to position or composition. So, for example, if I was to hold up a biology book, or chemistry book, or whatever book, anything, pencil, right? I'm holding it up about eye level. Now, when um, this book is not moving, it's not falling, obviously gravity is pulling down on it, the earth is pulling down on it, right? Well, what happens is this book has a high potential energy because it's not moving okay now the energy due that's kind of energy due to position energy due to composition is more having to do with like energy that's in bonds that like such as chemical bonds and intermolecular forces and so on and so forth, and so on and such so now that energy that potential energy in this book when i drop it that becomes kinetic energy that's energy in motion so what type of units do we have for energy? Well, the first one is the calorie. Okay, A calorie is an amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. So that's what a calorie is. Now, it's not the same type of calorie that you see right here. Okay, This 972, that 972 is referring to a big calorie or what we call a kilo calorie, which is a thousand calories. Okay, so we're going to deal mainly with calorie, the small c calorie, and the joule. We're not really going to deal too much with these big calories, okay? Um, now, with joules, we also have kilojoules, which kilo still means thousand. So a kilojoule, or kj, would be a thousand joules, okay? So the conversion or the relationship or conversion factor for our dimensional analysis, yeah, dimensional analysis, um, is one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules, which means um, it would take 4.184 joules of energy to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius, just like it takes one calorie of energy that will raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Okay? So, law of conservation of energy. So we know that with matter, we can't create or destroy matter, so like the mass of my reactions must equal mass of my products. Well, same thing can be said about energy. Okay, I cannot create or destroy energy. I can only convert it between forms, okay, or I can transfer it between objects. And that kind of plays into a part as to, well, what's, um, you know, this energy that's being transferred. Let's say if I transfer energy from one aspect, uh, one object to another, you know, what is the form of that energy? And that energy is in the form of heat, or what we call thermal energy. Heat is thermal energy, and that is transferred from an object with a higher temperature to an, to an object with lower temperature. So, for example, if I had, um, you know, two, I had a container right here, okay, and container A and container B are right next to each other. Let's say container A was really, really, really uh, had a high temperature, right? A high temperature, the heat that's being transferred over to B, which would be at a lower temperature, the fact that the energy is being transferred from A to B, okay, that is what we call heat, that energy transfer. Okay? The temperature, as I mentioned before, is a measurement of the average kinetic energy of particles in a sample. So heat is energy. Okay, as far as thermal energy that is being transferred. Big word, I know a lot of big word, but important word, transferred between objects. Okay. Temperature is just a measurement of kinetic energy of the particles. How fast, what's the average kinetic energy? What's the average speed 
of those particles moving in that sample. Okay, so there's the difference between heat and temperature. So, energy is exchanged in all chemical processes, including both physical and chemical changes. Okay, if you remember back, a physical change is when I, say, I take some ice and I melt it, right? It changes it, the, the state, right? But it doesn't change the fact that it's still water. Or if I break a pencil in half, okay, that's a physical change. It's still a pencil. A chemical change is when I, say, I burn that pencil, okay? And when I burn that pencil, it ceased to become a pencil and started becoming something else. That is a chemical change. But the point is here, energy is exchanged in all processes, whether they are chemical or physical, okay? Now, there's two ways that it can be exchanged. It can be exchanged um, exothermically, which means that the energy is going to be... Um, is going to be released from whatever's happening. So if this reaction's occurring and it gets hot, that's what we call it an exothermic process. So exo, thinking, exit, thermo, heat. So a, an exiting of heat. That's why you feel it get hot because the system, or what we call the um, the reaction, is pushing away the heat or releasing the heat. Okay, an endothermic process is when the system is absorbing the heat. And because the system is absorbing the heat or the reaction is absorbing the heat, it actually feels cold. When you guys have like ice packs, the, um, the instant cold ice packs where you break them and you move them around, that starts a chemical reaction that starts to absorb energy from around um, the reaction. And in doing so, that causes the outside of it to feel cold. Okay, but think of endo inside thermo heat so heat's going inside of the reaction versus exothermic the heat is leaving the reaction so this reaction that i was referring to whatever it happens to be we call it the system okay so if in an exothermic reaction that means heat is going to exit the system it's going to leave the reaction meaning that the reaction itself is going to produce heat. Therefore, it's called an exothermic reaction. That's why if I was to put my hand, my poor example of a hand right here, right, I would feel the heat that the system is giving off. All right? Now, how an exothermic reaction looks on what we call a potential energy diagram is, let's say I start here with my potential energy. This is my, uh, right here, these are my reactants, right? This is my reactants. Well, as a reaction is starting to take place, it requires a certain amount of energy to get started, okay? And that energy is called uh, activation energy, okay? You guys probably learned a little bit about it in, um, in biology when we talked about enzymes and how enzymes lower the activation energy of a reaction, okay? So, like for example, we have this diagram going right here where the reactants require a certain amount of energy because my potential energy is going to increase as I go up the y-axis, okay? The distance between here and here, right, that is my activation energy, the amount of energy needed to even start the reaction, right? Well, once the reaction starts to take place, I'm giving off a lot of energy right here, right? From here's my really high energy right up on top right here, a high energy, and then now I'm at a much lower energy. And this is where my products are, okay? So my reactants have more energy than my products. Well, I can't create or destroy that energy, so it has to go somewhere, and that energy is released, okay? into the environment or the surroundings. Released to surroundings. Okay? So this is a potential energy diagram for an exothermic reaction, meaning the energy of the reactants is greater than the energy of the products, which means that energy must be released. And usually when it's released, we add another product here, and we say energy. So, if, for example, this is the this reaction right here is the combustion of methane. Okay.
okay, CH4. So CH4 plus O2 is going to produce CO2, H2O, and energy. Okay. Now, later on, we're going to give a number and a quantity for that letter E over there to show you how much energy, and you'll be able to determine through stoichiometry how much energy per how much methane and or how much oxygen, whatever. Okay. But yes, you will be able to do that. So here's my example of, like I said, the energy needed to push the rock up initially, right, is my activation energy. And then once it starts falling down, that is the reaction taking place. Okay, just an analogy. Now, an endothermic reaction is when heat is going to be absorbed into the system, meaning the reaction is going to cause the um, system to get warmer. Well, obviously, if the system gets warmer, that means everything outside the system, the surroundings, gets cooler. So that's why endothermic reactions feel cold. Okay? Now, a potential energy diagram here is starting off. Here's my reactants right here still. I'm going to have my reaction take place or my activation energy reached and then my products. Okay? So in this case, I'm, I'm a little high that here. Start here, right up there. So here are my reactants. Here are my products. In this case, the reaction here is I'm going from solid ammonium chloride to aqueous ammonium chloride, which means I'm dissolving it. So this is a uh, dissolution, right, where I'm dissolving something. Well, my, in this case, my reactants have lower energy than my products. Right? So if my reactants have less energy than my products, that means the energy needed to be absorbed somewhere. Because I have this amount of energy right here between the products and the reactants that is unaccounted for. So that means energy must come into the reaction to fill this space. Because however much energy I started with, I need to have um, as my product. Okay? So sometimes that energy gets converted into making new bonds. But sometimes that energy is either absorbed or released into the environment. And that's the whole idea behind endothermic and exothermic reactions. Okay? So your summary, energy is always absorbed or released in chemical processes. Okay? An exothermic reaction is when heat is released. Okay? Exothermic re or sorry. An endothermic reaction is when heat is absorbed, meaning the system is going to lose energy, lose heat, because the, the system is going to gain heat. And the surroundings are going to lose heat. That's why the surroundings feel cold. Okay? And then lastly, that 1.00 calories, hopefully you should know, equals 4.184 joules.